Hello, my name is Troy Atkins, and I am the founder and owner of Atkins Capital Management. Atkins Capital Management is a housing advisory services company. I want to talk to you today about the key events that have transpired in the U.S. residential housing market during the first quarter of 2022. During the first quarter of this year, a review of the monetary policy actions of the Federal Reserve amid the COVID-19 pandemic and the growing rate of inflation was the primary topic of conversation. This movie presentation also provides an overview of the home price level for a select group of cities that make up the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index, and it provides a wealth of information for prospective home buyers to use in order to make a prudent home purchase decision. This presentation was written, narrated, edited, produced, and published by Troy Atkins. I am the founder and owner of Atkins Capital Management. Atkins Capital Management is a privately owned and independently operated company. Our exclusive focus is on residential real estate. ACM is not affiliated with any parties associated with the residential housing industry. Our mission is to bridge the gap in the residential housing market, where deficiencies in education, public policy, regulation, product structure, and personnel have created an environment where prospective home buyers need objective information and useful analytical tools in order to help them make a prudent home purchase decision. As an investment professional, I have more than 15 years of real estate analysis experience, more than 10 years of institutional investment consulting experience, and more than eight years of freelance financial writing experience. I am also the author of more than 25 published articles. For more information about my background, skills, and experience, please visit the Atkins Capital Management website. In view of the economic impact of the global COVID-19 pandemic and the realized threat of inflation, the Federal Reserve Committee increased the target range for the federal funds rate to 0.25% and 0.5%. According to the Fed, the indicators of economic activity and employment have continued to strengthen. Job gains have been strong in recent months, and the unemployment rate has declined substantially. However, inflation remains elevated, reflecting supply and demand imbalances relative to the pandemic, higher energy prices, and broader price pressures. According to the Fed, the invasion of Ukraine by Russia is causing tremendous human and economic hardship. The implications for the U.S. economy are highly uncertain, but in the near term, the invasion and related events are likely to create additional upward pressure on inflation and weigh on economic activity. During its meeting, the Fed Committee reiterated that it seeks to achieve maximum employment and inflation at the rate of 2% over the longer run. With appropriate firming in the stance of monetary policy, the committee expects inflation to return to its 2% objective and the labor market to remain strong. The committee anticipates that ongoing increases in the target range will be appropriate. In addition, the committee expects to begin reducing its holdings of Treasury securities and agency debt and agency mortgage-backed securities at a coming meeting. Going forward, it is logical to conclude that mortgage loan interest rates will trend upward as the committee begins to gradually raise the target federal funds rate. This upward pressure on mortgage loan interest rates will likely be exacerbated as the committee begins to slow its purchasing of agency mortgage-backed securities which in turn will put more pressure on the private sector to provide mortgage lending capital. Nevertheless, historically speaking, mortgage loan interest rates are still at very low levels. In accordance with the monetary policy actions of the Federal Reserve, the national average mortgage loan interest rate for a 30-year fully amortized fixed rate loan began the quarter at 3.2% 
and ended the quarter at 4.78%. The national average mortgage loan interest rate for a 30-year fully amortized fixed rate loan reached an all-time low of 2.67% on December 17th of 2020 and the all-time high of 18.63% in October of 1981. Now that I have provided an overview of the events and trends that have taken place in the residential housing environment for the quarter, let me turn your attention to the proprietary finance-based analytical methodology and cloud-based residential real estate analysis software application that you can use in order to provide an assessment of the price level of homes in your community, as well as for specific home purchase opportunities. The Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer is an internet-based software application that analyzes the relationship between the median home price level for a city and the median household income level for the city. With this information, the software application takes into account the most recent month-ending national average mortgage loan interest rate for a 30-year fully amortized fixed-rate mortgage loan and the assumption that no more than 28% of pre-tax household income should be spent by homeowners in order to repay the principal and interest costs for their mortgage loan. By utilizing this information, the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer can accurately assess the price level of homes in your city. From the first analytical perspective, the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer determines the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in your city by calculating the mortgage loan interest rate that justifies the price level of homes in your city. With this information, the justified mortgage loan interest rate is compared against the national average mortgage loan interest rate in order to accurately quantify and assess the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in your city. From the second analytical perspective, the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer calculates the percentage of household income that would have to be spent by the people that live in your city in order to justify the price level of homes in your city. With this information, the justified percentage of household income amount is compared against the traditionally accepted household income amount of 28% in order to accurately quantify and assess the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in your city. By utilizing the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer, you can determine the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in your community, as well as the magnitude of underpricing or overpricing of a specific home that you are considering to purchase. This in turn will help you make a prudent home purchase decision. For more information about our finance-based analytical methodology, and the use of the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer, please review our finance-based analytical methodology report on the Atkins Capital Management website and watch the wealth of movie presentations that provide an overview of how the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer is utilized. With this overview in mind, let us now focus on the assessment of the price level of homes across the country. For the first quarter of this year, 39 cities that make up the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index were classified as overpriced for the quarter. This is an increase of 11 cities that have been identified as overpriced since the fourth quarter of 2021. Honolulu, San Francisco, Boston, Los Angeles, and New York City were identified as the five most overpriced cities in the index. In terms of a relative price level analysis, it is not possible to justify the home price level for the top five overpriced cities by reducing the 30-year fixed rate mortgage loan interest rate from 4.78% to 0%. Therefore, in order to classify the homes in the top five overpriced cities as underpriced, it would need to be deemed prudent by prospective home buyers to spend more than the respective justified percentage of household income amounts. In terms of a relative price level analysis, in order to justify the median home price level for each city, the median required household income level 
would need to increase to a level within the respective range of $162,523 and $338,254. Based on the median household income level, the quarter ending national average mortgage loan interest rate, and the assumption that no more than 28% of pre-tax household income should be spent in order to repay the principal and interest costs of a mortgage loan, the justified home price level for the top five overpriced cities fell within the respective range of $269,274 and $500,092. Prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess the level of overpricing of homes in their community. On the other side of the spectrum, based upon the justified percentage of household income amount, 21 cities that make up the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index were classified as underpriced for the quarter. Detroit, Jackson, St. Louis, Memphis, and Wichita were identified as the top five most underpriced cities in the index. It is important to note that Memphis was classified as the fourth most underpriced city in the index due to its higher justified mortgage loan interest rate amount. In order to classify homes in the top five underpriced cities as overpriced, the national average mortgage loan interest rate would have to increase from 4.78% to more than the respective justified mortgage loan interest rate amount for each city, which fell within the range of 8.8% and 19.7%, or it would have to be deemed imprudent by prospective home buyers to spend as much as the respective justified percentage of household income amount for each city in order to repay the cost of a mortgage loan. Given the recent events that have transpired in the residential housing market, and taking into account the fact that buying a home will likely be the largest single financial transaction the prospective home buyers will ever make, and the bulk of their net worth will likely be tied up in their home, prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to analyze residential real estate from five financial perspectives. First, Prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess the level of underpricing or overpricing of homes in their community. Second, prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess the largest amount of money they should spend in order to purchase a home. Third, prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess the amount of money they would need to earn on an annual basis in order to be able to afford to purchase a specific home. Fourth, prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess total home ownership costs expressed as a percentage of household income. And fifth, prospective home buyers should use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer in order to assess how much a home would need to appreciate in value each year in order to offset the costs associated with owning the home. By assessing residential real estate in this manner, prospective home buyers will be able to make a prudent home purchase decision. For more information about the Atkins 60 City Home Price Index, to watch our catalog of residential housing movie presentations, or to subscribe to use the Atkins Residential Home Valuation Analyzer, please visit the Atkins Capital Management website at residentialrealestateanalysis.com. This is Troy Atkins saying thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation.